Hello everyone, this is Beastly Eel here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Season 2 premiere of The Bad Batch. So with this season premiere, they actually had two episodes air at once, and we're going to go dive right in. So, <clears throat> the, epi the season, I should say, starts with them being on a remote planet where they are trying, they have stolen um, the cash that they needed. The problem was some sort of crab-like creatures were after them. So clearly, apparently, Wrecker did not do what he was supposed to do, and that's why they were being attacked. <clears throat> so they needed backup. So Tech and Omega were still on the ship, while the others were claiming the um, the prize, I guess you would say. And so they, they have to work together, and um, Omega, while she was on the ship, was studying um, all the different types of ships. So she has better information and knowledge of what's going on in the world around her. While this is going on, they go to go help the rest of their squad while the other crab creatures are attacking their ship. So this is where we actually see Omega's combat um, ability, um, which we have not seen in the past, obviously, because she has not been trained at all. But now we see her accuracy pretty, pretty well. Um, she starts shooting off the crab guys off the ship rather easily and then she helps the guys um the remaining ones by shooting the crab people away from them while they get onto the ship and you know they they're happy that they're back and all that stuff but the you know hunter's not happy that omega was not on the ship and she was hanging off the bottom um very much like a protective father so anyway they bring the cash back to sid where there is somebody who is there um who is apparently a friend of sid who's given her information on another thing to steal. Now, that being said, um, she takes the cash um, that the boys had taken, and Wrecker helps bring it to her ship. Hunter wants nothing to do, uh, so Sid tells him the next mission, which is to go to Camp, uh, Count Duco's old palace and remove as much of his war chest as possible. Now, for those of you who don't know, the war chest is literally what it sounds like. It's his chest full of all goods and um, resources from all the creatures, planets, and civilizations he's conquered, including the one under the planet. So, he, um, <clears throat> Hunter is 100% against it. While Sid convinces the rest of them, while Hunter was talking to Omega, um, that they should do this mission and Hunter was not pleased but what gets him to um, actually agree is the fact that Sid says you know this this mission will actually pay out more than all their missions that they've done so far combined so that being said they would actually be able to buy their freedom completely away from um, the Empire's prowess so that's the only reason why Hunter agrees. So they leave to go off. Now we see some internal conflict because Echo does not like the idea of them doing nothing while the Empire basically destroys the universe. And Hunter just wants to be left alone and be away from everything and be with Omega so she can live a normal life. Stings to stink, but the welcome to the life, right? So they land on the planet and they see the destruction that the Empire caused to the planet um, after Count Duco's demise. Um, they basically bombarded it with um, explosions and we see them, or the Empire I should say, we see the Empire starting to remove all of their goods off planet. So they have all these um, cargo containers filled to the brim. I mean massive amounts. So we only see one ship officially take off and that's when they realize that they don't have much time to get this done. So Hunter splits off from the rest of the group. Hunter is getting ready to set up a diversion in case they need it um, for escape purposes or if they get caught. While the rest of the team is going to be going into the to the cargos, cargo holds sorry, and going in and stealing as much stuff as they possibly can. So here's what happens. So Hunter starts um, booby trapping as many of the ships as he can. Uh, while the rest of them start to um, break into the cargo. What they find out is that 
um, they find that there's a whole bunch of stuff that they can get. So they take off one of the big containers that has a whole bunch of stuff. So Wrecker takes it. And what happens is um, one of the squad leaders of the stormtroopers realizes that something's going amiss. So he tell he orders the um, he orders them that he's got to get them off ship. But the reason for it is because Wrecker stuns one of the stormtroopers and pulls him inside to the cargo hold. Now, because of this, that particular stormtrooper does not actually check in when needed. And that's when they go on full alert. So they actually tell or are ordered to get all, all of the cargo off the sh off planet immediately. While this is happening, Wrecker is already off ship with that big amount of jewels and all other stuff. While this happens, all the cargo holds shut and lock, leaving Echo, Tech, and Omega stuck inside. Now, Hunter gets back to the group, or so he thinks, um, after exploding as many of the fighters as he was able to booby trap. Um, the problem became that um, the group could not get out. So they had to decide they had to go into the ship further to get a uh, escape pod to get out. So what they had found out as they go after the two guys um, is that there were people still inside the cargo hold. So what they ordered to do was to release all of the escape pods. So all the escape pods were released, so they were unable to escape in the way that they wanted to. So Omega actually came up with the idea that all of the cargo um, caches actually have thrusters to help them get back into orbit. I mean, uh, get, get them um, for landing. So that means that if all of the cargo's, uh, cargo caches are released, they would be able to land as best they can on planet without dying. So they proceed to do so. So while this is going on, there is a huge firefight um, with them having to deal with the guys on the ship. And then you have um, Hunter and Wrecker having to deal with a bunch of people on the um, in Count Duco's ca uh, palace. So they just had to escape into the city. And then we have the cash, um, all of the cargo ships being released. And unfortunately, um, at least not right away, the thrusters were not working. As they got closer to um, surface level, that's when the thrusters actually went in and they landed on the ground. The problem was they were half of a cliff. While they were moving around, it slid off the cliff but landed in a group of trees. <clears throat> and in those trees, they were stuck. So they get out and they escape. What happens is while they were escaping, they, they find that there is an old man there. Um, who they find out is a resident of the planet and they I don't want to say use the word request because that's not really what they did they basically forced the guy to allow, um, to have them stay at his place until things um, started to die down and their ride arrived so while this is going on Hunter and Wrecker are trying to evade all of the stormtroopers who are desperately looking for them so both things are happening at once we find out that the people that deck um, that were in Count Duco's planet were a decent group of people um, before, you know, the separatists got involved and everything else, and now the Empire. So um, they're talking about all this stuff. Echo is, um, I'm not sorry, Omega is ordered to watch um, the old man. Now, what I did forget to mention was as they were falling. Tech got his leg fractured from one of the cargo um, pieces smashing into his leg. So he is unable to do a lot. So while this is going on, they're talking about how without that cash, they're not going to be able to go back to a normal life or do anything remotely helpful against the Empire. Well, Omega hears this and automatically blames herself, and she takes off to go get um, anything from the cargo hold. So that means um, Echo and Tech have to go after her. Now Echo goes after her. Tech is hobbling behind. He's not being able to do much whatsoever. So um, while all of this is going on, um, 
Hunter and Wrecker are trying to figure out how they're going to escape. Well, Wrecker decides to rip a cannon off one of the, the tanks because none of the tanks seem to have been working to produce any firepower. So they remove the battery of one tank, put it into the gun of another, and they started blasting um, the stormtroopers and all of their defenses, or offenses as well. So they start to go, and they are able to get to the ship and take off. Now, then we have Tech, I'm sorry, not Tech, we have, uh, oh my gosh, Echo, make it to uh, where Omega was, and he sees a cable going down to the cargo ship. So he go, he's going to go down to get her, but he starts getting open fired on by stormtroopers. So he scales down, and actually the, the cable gets blasted by one of the stormtroopers, and he falls in, on, um, and Omega is there as well, and she's got a bag full of, of uh, valuables. Now, while everything is going on, the cargo ship is kind of like bouncing around, and unfortunately, she loses all of her goods. Um, and she's just devastated because she know she thinks she knows that the only re uh, without that um, she's going to be blamed for them having a miserable life, which anybody who's watched the show knows that would not be the case. Now, that being said, we have Tech, who is now dealing with those stormtroopers on the cliff, um, is actually holding his own, I will say, um, but is having a difficult time. When he takes them all out. Um, which were not many. I think there were only three or four. Those stormtroopers had already called for backup, so now there's a bunch of people heading to that location. Um, one of the old men, I mean, the old man was there to help Tech. Um, so Tech gets onto the, um, like, the sentry, and he starts opening fire on ev everything that's in the way. While this is going on, they start pulling up everybody up. They get the two off the, the cargo ship and back onto land, and that's when... Um, Wrecker and Hunter fly down and they pick them up. And during this time, Echo and Omega have a heart-to-heart -heart talk on that the fact that, you know, she's devastated that they couldn't get anything and it's her fault and blah, blah, blah. And Echo's just basically like, we made a choice and we'd make that choice um, every single time, no matter what. And that's how the second episode ends. And, um, well, that piece anyway. And then what we find out is the leader of the stormtroopers um, is has the other uh, commander come in, who is f the one from season one who is 100% against um, stormtroopers. He goes there and he basically tells the uh, person there, uh, the leader there, that his report was, was false. And he's like, no, I know for a fact that members of squad... Uh, Clone Squad 99 were here. I had visual confirmation. And that's when the other guy told him, well, I don't want to look bad or look like a liar. So guess what's going to happen? You're going to falsify your records um, and not mention them whatsoever. And the Stormtrooper refuses, who was is a clone. And um, that's when the commander shot him and killed him. And he fell off the cliff. And that is how the episodes end. So a um, couple of big things here. Um, one of the one of the major things here is that the Empire is under the impression that Squad 99 is dead. Meaning that they um, are still going to be able to fly under the radar for a while um, because everyone thinks that they are no longer in existence. Um, we see some issues internally in the Empire, which shouldn't be all that shocking. Um, which I think will also backfire on them later in the series. Um, and we also have the end goal of, which has been the end goal from the get-go, um, the fact that they get enough money so they can live a normal life. But the bigger difference here is we are actually seeing a difference between what Echo wants and what Hunter wants. Hunter wants a life with Omega, where Echo wants a better world for everybody because they have the means and the abilities to do something or should be able to do something, so therefore they should try. I thought these two episodes were actually pretty good. Um, I'm definitely glad that they did put um, did premiere both episodes because I would have been very PO'd with the way the first episode ended if I couldn't watch the second. But that being said, overall, did like it. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the season. Um, but let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Did you like these two episodes? Did you not? Um, you know, let me know why in the comments. Also. If you like the content you see, please like and subscribe below. Other than that, this is going to be Beastly Eel signing out. Have a great night.